Let's see how you can harness the full power of low code to build your very own AI based software as a service. We will be building a background remover that uses AI to remove the background from your photos. Our Microsoft will have additional features such as user authentication, a credit system where one photo is equal to one credit, credit packages so that users can purchase more credits. We will be building this project in low code using ROWI and its low code tools for managing the backend running on Google Cloud. We will also be using the Replicate API to remove the backgrounds from uploaded photos and strive for handling the purchasing of more credits. We will also have a separate Next.js project to power the front end. First, we'll be setting up our ROWI backend. And after we finish creating the tables we need in ROWI, we'll work towards getting the front end working locally. In ROWI, create a table from the AI Microsoft template. You will be asked to provide a name for the table where all your data will be stored. You can simply keep the defaults and move on to the next step. Now you need to select your Replicate API key. And now you need to select your Stripe API key. Okay, now you need to add your Vercel URL. Since we'll be doing all our testing locally, you can just enter a local host 3000 for now, as this is the default host our front-end project will be running on. Let's now deploy our backend webhooks. Roy gives you a pre-built automation code that can be deployed in one click to your own Google Cloud project. The deployed webhooks will handle Stripe events as well as events stemming from the Replicate API. Now we can deploy the cloud functions required by our project. As is the case with webhooks, Rowi gives you pre-built automation code for all the backend functionality, which can be deployed in one click to your own Google Cloud project. Deep knowledge of Google Cloud is not required. Rowi takes care of it for you and gives you a low-code approach to work on top of Google Cloud. Perfect. So the functions are all deployed and we're almost done with the setup phase. But before moving on to the front end, we need to update our star prediction webhook. In ROWI, open up webhooks and click edit on the one that says start prediction. Here, we need to add our prediction done webhook URL. You can copy this webhook endpoint from the prediction done webhook and simply paste it here. In save and deploy. And now we're all good to go on the ROWI side. But before we can test that everything works, we need to get our front-end project working locally. Our next year's front-end is where all the interactions will take place. This is where users will be able to upload photos, authenticate, and purchase more credits. All that is generated here will eventually end up in our ROWI table. Okay, let's get started. First, you need to clone the demo Microsoft repository. A link to the repository will be in the description of this video. Next, change into the demo Microsoft directory. And now let's install the project dependencies. Great, all the dependencies are now installed, but before we can run the project, we need to add some environment variables. Open a project in your favorite editor and let's create a new env.local file. This is where we'll be adding our environment variables. We can use the env.local example as a starting point for all the environment variables we need to set. First, let's add the Stripe and Replicate environment variables. You can get these values from your Stripe and Replicate dashboards. Next, we need to set a bunch of Firebase related environment variables. Go to your Firebase project and select project settings. Scroll down to the SDK in configuration section and select config. And these are the values we need to add as environment variables. Okay, now the next environment variable we need to set is the profiles table ID. If you left the default table name during the template setup phase, you should set this to Microsoft profiles. Otherwise, set it to whatever table name you entered. And the last two environment variables are the webhook endpoints for starting a prediction and creating a Stripe checkout session. In ROWI, you can get these values from the webhook section. And that's it for the environment variables. We're almost ready to start our project. We just need to do one more thing. We need to set a webhook URL in the Stripe dashboard that will be called whenever a checkout is completed. In the Stripe dashboard, navigate to webhooks and click an endpoint. For the endpoint URL, head back to ROWI and open up webhooks. Look for the one that's named Stripe checkout session completed and copy the URL. Now we can paste this as the endpoint URL. 
Now click select events and search for checkout. Select the one that says checkout session completed and click add events. Now click add endpoint to create and that's all. All right, that's all the setup we need to do. And now let's run our project. Back in the project folder, run the command npm run dev to start the local development server. Then go to local host 3000 to see the front end running. Great, now that we have our ROWI backend and front end all set up, we can start verifying that everything works. Let's upload our first photo as an anonymous user. And after a short moment, we can see that the photo is returned with the background removed and our credit usage has been increased by one. If we want, we can also choose to download the image. Now let's sign in using our Gmail account. And let's try again with the same photo. And we can see that it still works as expected. Now, if we go to the dashboard, we can see all the photos we previously uploaded. Now let's try purchasing more credits. Let's go to the packages page and purchase an additional hundred credits for $5. And after a short moment, we'll be redirected to the Stripe checkout form. Since our Stripe account is currently in test mode, we can simulate a checkout by using one of the test cards that Stripe gives us. You can get this from the Stripe developers dashboard. Click the one that says successful payment, and we can use this as the card number in the checkout form. Okay, let's paste the card number here. You can simply enter anything for the other fields. Now click pay to continue. And after a short moment, we'll be redirected back to the credit packages page where we can see that our total credits has been increased by 100. Nice. So it looks like our front end is working flawlessly. And now that we have some data stored in our database, let's head back into Rowi so we can break down how our back end is reacting to these events coming from our front end. The first thing you'll see here is that now we have rows in our profiles table. We have a number of fields populated, such as the user's name, email, profile picture, and package information, and so on. Now let's briefly go over the webhooks that are responsible for removing the backgrounds from user uploaded photos. Our start prediction webhook is called whenever a photo is uploaded from the front end. This webhook retrieves the necessary information from the request such as the profile ID and image data. It makes a request to the replicate prediction API with the image and receives the prediction response. If a profile exists for the given ID, it updates the profile with the prediction response and adds the image to a sub collection. Finally, it returns a success response with the ID of the added image. Our next webhook prediction done is triggered when the prediction process is completed. And its purpose is to update the relevant documents based on the prediction response. It extracts the necessary data from the request body, such as the ID. Using this ID, it performs a query to find matching documents. If matching documents are found, it proceeds to update the profile document with the prediction response and increments the package that's use value. Additionally, it queries the image sub collection and updates any matching image documents with prediction response. Now let's briefly go over our Stripe related webhooks. When we purchase a credit package from the front end, the create Stripe checkout session webhook is called. This webhook is responsible for creating a checkout session using the Stripe NPM package. It retrieves necessary information from the request such as the profile ID and credit package details. Then it creates a checkout session using the Stripe API, specifying metadata such as the purchase package and the user ID. It also defines the success and console URLs for the checkout flow. The code then constructs a line item for the checkout session, specifying the currency, product name, and unit amount based on the credit package details. Finally, it sends back a response with the success flag and the URL of the created checkout session. Lastly, the Stripe checkout session completed webhook is called after a successful checkout. It extracts the purchased package details and user ID from the request 
It queries the profiles collection based on the user ID to find the corresponding profile. And if a profile is found, it retrieves the credit package details and determines the number of credits to add. It then updates the profile document by incrementing the credit limit with the calculated credits. So now you might be wondering where the images are located. All uploaded images are grouped by profile and stored in an images subcollection. So if we open up one of these images subcollection for a profile, we can see that all the images are stored here. We have the original images as well as the images without background. We also have a status flag that indicates whether the background removal process is in progress or completed. And that's all it takes to realize your SAS ideas. Row gives you the low code tools to use so that you can focus almost exclusively on your product and build fully customizable projects without any of the limitations that you'd usually find in most low-code platforms. In this demo, we integrated Rowi with an existing Next.js frontend, but you could easily do the same for your preferred frameworks or no-code app filters. Lastly, there's tons of templates and demos available to get you quickly started with your own project. Give it a try today and let us know what you think. That's all we have for now. See you in the next one.